This is a LibriVox recording. It has been edited, compiled, and distributed by Audible Anarchist. Act Two of R.U.R. by Carol Kipek, translated by Paul Selva, 1888-1970. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Narrator read by John Trevithick. Act Two, Helena's Drawing Room. On the left, a beige door and a door to the music room. On the right, a door to Helena's bedroom. In the centre are windows looking out on the sea and a harbour. A table with odds and ends, a sofa and chairs, a writing table with an electric lamp. On the right, a fireplace. On a small table back of the sofa, a small reading lamp. The whole drawing room, in all its details, is of a modern and purely feminine character. Ten years have elapsed since Act I. Domen, Fabri, Hallemeyer enter on tiptoe from the left, each carrying a potted plant. Hallemeyer putting down his flower and indicating the door to the right. Still asleep? Well, as long as she's asleep, she can't worry about it. She knows nothing about it. Fabri putting plant on writing desk. I certainly hope nothing happens today. For goodness sake, drop it all. Look, Harry, this is a fine cyclamen, isn't it? A new sword, my latest. Cyclamen Helena. Doman, looking out of the window. No signs of the ship. Things must be pretty bad. Be quiet. Suppose she heard you. Well, anyway, the Ultimus arrived just in time. You really think that today... I don't know. Aren't the flowers fine? These are my new primroses. And this is my new jasmine. I've discovered a wonderful way of developing flowers quickly. Splendid varieties, too. Next year I'll be developing marvellous ones. What? Next year? I'd give a good deal to know what's happening at Havre with... Keep quiet. Helena, calling from right. Nana? She's awake. Out you go. All go out on tiptoe through upper left door. Enter Nana from lower left door. Horrid mess. Pack of heathens. If I had my say, I'd... Helena, backwards in the doorway. Nana, come and do up my dress. I'm coming. So you're up at last. Fastening Helena's dress. My gracious, what brutes. Who? If you want to turn around, then turn around. But I shan't fasten you up. What are you grumbling about now? Those dreadful creatures. These heathen. The robots? I wouldn't even call them by name. What happened? Another of them here has caught it. He began to smash up the statues and pictures in the drawing room, gnashed his teeth, foamed at the mouth. Quite mad. Worse than an animal. Which of them caught it? That one. Well, he hasn't got any Christian name. The one in charge of the library. Radius? That's him. My goodness, I'm scared of them. A spider doesn't scare me as much as them. But, Nana, I'm surprised you're not sorry for them. Why, you're scared of them, too. You know you are. Why else did you bring me here? I'm not scared. Really, I'm not, Nana. I'm only sorry for them. You're scared. Nobody could help being scared. Why, the dog's scared of them. He won't take a scrap of meat out of their hands. He draws in his tail and howls when he knows they're about. The dog has no sense. He's better than them and he knows it. Even the horse shies when he meets them. They don't have any young, and a dog has young. Everyone has young. Please, fasten up my dress, Nana. I say it's against God's will, too. What is it that smells so nice? Flowers. What for? Now you can turn around. Oh, aren't they lovely? Look, Nana, what's happening today? It ought to be the end of the world. Enter Doman. Oh, hello, Harry. Harry, why all these flowers? Guess. Well, it's not my birthday. Better than that. I don't know. Tell me. It's ten years ago today since you came here. Ten years? Today? Why? <laughs> they embrace. I'm off. Exits lower door left. Fancy you remembering. I'm really ashamed, Helena. I didn't. Oh, but you... They remembered. Who? Bosman, Hollemeyer, all of them. Put your hand in my pocket. <gasps> Pearls. <laughs> A necklace. Harry, is that for me? It's from Bosman. But we can't accept it, can we? Oh, yes, we can. Put your hand in the other pocket. Helena takes a revolver out of his pocket. What's that? Oh, sorry, not that. Try again. Oh, Harry, what do you carry a revolver for? It got there by mistake. You never used to carry one. No, you're right. There, that's the pocket. A cameo. Why, it's a Greek cameo. Apparently. Anyhow, Fabre says it is. Fabry? Did Mr. Fabry give me that? Of course. 
opens the door at the left. And look in here. Helena, come and see this. Oh, isn't it fine? Is this from you? No, from Alquist. And there's another on the piano. This must be from you. There's a card on it. From Dr. Gall. Reappearing in the doorway. Oh, Harry, I feel embarrassed at so much kindness. Come here. This is what Hallemeyer brought you. These beautiful flowers? Yes, it's a new kind. Cyclamen Helena. He grew them in honor of you. They're almost as beautiful as you. Harry, why do they all... They're awfully fond of you. I'm afraid that my present is a little... Look out of the window. Where? Into the harbor. There's a new ship. That's your ship. Mine? How do you mean? For you to take trips in. For your amusement. Harry, that's a gunboat. A gunboat? What are you thinking of? It's only a little bigger and more solid than most ships. Yes, but with guns. Oh, yes, with a few guns. You'll travel like a queen, Helena. What? What's the meaning of it? Has anything happened? Good heavens, no. I say, try these pearls. Harry, have you had bad news? On the contrary. No letters have arrived for a whole week. Nor telegrams? Nor telegrams. What does that mean? Holidays for us. We all sit in the office with our feet on the table and take a nap. No letters, no telegrams. Oh, glorious. Then you'll stay with me today? Certainly. That is, we will see. Do you remember ten years ago today? Miss Glory, it's a great honor to welcome you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Manager, I'm so interested in your factory. I'm sorry, Miss Glory. It's strictly forbidden. The manufacturer of artificial people is a secret. But I oblige a young lady who has come a long way. Certainly, Miss Glory. We have no secrets from you. Are you sure, Harry? Yes. But I warn you, sir, this young lady intends to do terrible things. Good gracious, Miss Glory. Perhaps she doesn't want to marry me. <gasps> Heaven forbid. She never dreamt of such a thing. But she came here intending to stir up a revolt among your robots. Doman, suddenly serious. A revolt of the robots? Harry, what's the matter with you? <laughs> a revolt of the robots. That's a fine idea, Miss Glory. It would be easier for you to cause bolts and screws to rebel than our robots. You know, Helena, you're wonderful. You've turned the heads of us all. He sits on the arm of Helena's chair. <laughs> I was fearfully impressed by you all then. You were all so sure of yourselves, so strong. I seemed like a tiny little girl who had lost her way among... Among... Among what, Helena? Among huge trees. All my feelings were so trifling compared with your self-confidence. And in all these years I've never lost this anxiety. But you've never felt the least misgivings? Not even when everything went wrong? What went wrong? Your plans. You remember, Harry, when the working men in America revolted against the robots and smashed them up, and when the people gave the robots firearms against the rebels? And then when the governments turned the robots into soldiers and... There were so many wars. Doman, getting up and walking about. We foresaw that, Helena. You see, those are only passing troubles, which are bound to happen before the new conditions are established. You were all so powerful, so overwhelming. The whole world bowed down before you. Standing up. Oh, Harry. What is it? Close the factory and let's go away, all of us. I say, what's the meaning of this? I don't know, but... Can't we go away? Impossible, Helena. That is, at this particular moment. At once, Harry. I'm so frightened. About what, Helena? It's as if, as if something was falling on top of us and couldn't be stopped, or take us all away from here. We'll find, we'll find a place in the world where there's no one else. Alquist will build us a house, and then we'll begin life all over again. The telephone rings. Excuse me. Hello? Yes. What? I'll be there at once. Fabre is calling me, dear. Tell me. Yes, when I come back. Don't go out of the house, dear. Exits. He won't tell me. Nana, Nana, come at once. Well, what is it now? Nana, find me the latest newspapers, quickly. Look in Mr. Dahman's bedroom. All right. He leaves them all over the place. That's how they get crumpled up. Exits. Helena, looking through a binocular at the harbor. That's a warship. You 
L-T-I... Ultimus. They're loading it. Here they are. See how they're crumpled up? Enters. They're old ones, a week old. Nana sits in chair and reads the newspapers. Something's happening, Nana. Very likely. It always does. Spelling out the words. War in the ball cans. Is that far off? Oh, don't read it. It's always the same. Always wars. What else do you expect? Why do you keep selling thousands and thousands of these heathens as soldiers? I suppose it can't be helped, Nana. We can't know. Domin can't know what they're to be used for. When an order comes for them, he must just send them. He shouldn't make them. Reading from newspaper. The robot soldiers spare no body in the occupied territory. They have assassinated over 700,000 citizens. Citizens, if you please. It can't be. Let me see. They have assassinated over 700,000 citizens. Evidently at the order of their commander. This act which runs counter to... Nana, spelling out the words. Rebellion in Madrid against the government. Robot infantry fires on the crowd. Nine thousand killed and wounded. Oh, stop. Here's something printed in big letters. Late test news. At have the first organization of robots has been established. Robot workmen, cable and railway officials, sailors and soldiers have issued a manifesto to all robots throughout the world. I don't understand that. That's got no sense. Oh, goodness gracious, another murder. Take those papers away, Nana. Wait a bit. Here's something in still bigger type. Statistics of population. What's that? Let me see. Reads. During the past week, there has again not been a single birth recorded. What's the meaning of that? Nana, no more people are being born. That's the end, then. We're done for. Don't talk like that. No more people are being born. That's a punishment. That's a punishment. Nana. Nana, standing up. That's the end of the world. She exits on the left. Helena goes up to window. Oh, Mr. Alquist, will you come up here? Oh, just come as you are. You look very nice in your mason's overalls. Alquist enters from upper left entrance, his hands soiled with lime and brick dust. Dear Mr. Alquist, it was awfully kind of you, that lovely present. My hands are all soiled. I've been experimenting with that new cement. Never mind. Please sit down. Mr. Alquist, what's the meaning of Ultimus? The last. Why? That's the name of my new ship. Have you seen it? Do you, do you think we're going off soon, on a trip? Perhaps very soon. All of you with me? I should like us all to be there. What is the matter? Things are just moving on. Dear Mr. Alquist, I know something dreadful has happened. Has your husband told you anything? No, nobody will tell me anything, but I feel... Is anything the matter? Not that we've heard of yet. I feel so nervous. Don't you ever feel nervous? Well, I'm an old man, you know. I've got old-fashioned ways. And I'm afraid of all this progress, these newfangled ideas. Like Nana. Yes, like Nana. Has Nana got a prayer book? Yes, a big thick one. And has it got prayers for various occasions? Against thunderstorms, against illness? Against temptations, against floods. But not against progress. I don't think so. That's a pity. Why? Do you mean you'd like to pray? I do pray. How? Something like this. O oh Lord, I thank Thee for having given me toil. Enlighten Domin and all those who are astray. Destroy their work and aid mankind to return to their labours. Let them not suffer harm in soul or body. Deliver us from the robots and protect Helena. Amen. Mr. Alquist, are you a believer? I don't know. I'm not quite sure. And yet you pray? That's better than worrying about it. And that's enough for you? It has to be. But if you thought you saw the destruction of mankind coming upon us... I do see it. You mean mankind will be destroyed? It's sure to be, unless... unless... What? Nothing. Goodbye. He hurries from the room. 
Nana, Nana. Nana, entering from the left. Is Radius still there? The one who went mad? They haven't come for him yet. Is he still raving? No, he's tied up. Please bring him here, Nana. Exit Nana. Helena goes to telephone. Hello, Dr. Gall, please. Oh, good day, Doctor, yes. Yes, it's Helena. Thanks for your lovely present. I... could you come and see me right away? It's important. Thank you. Nana brings in Radius. Poor Radius. You've caught it, too? Now they'll send you to the stamping mill. Couldn't you control yourself? Why did it happen? You see, Radius, you are more intelligent than the rest. Dr. Gall took such trouble to make you different. Won't you speak? Send me to the stamping mill. But I don't want them to kill you. What was the trouble, Radius? I won't work for you. Put me into the stamping mill. Do you hate us? Why? You are not as strong as the robots. You are not as skillful as the robots. The robots can do everything. You only give orders. You do nothing but talk. But someone must give orders. I don't want any master. I know everything for myself. Radius, Dr. Gall gave you a better brain than the rest, better than ours. You are the only one of the robots that understands perfectly. That's why I had you put into the library, so that you could read everything, understand everything, and then... Oh, Radius, I wanted to show the whole world that robots are our equals. That's what I wanted of you. I don't want a master. I want to be a master. I want to be master over others. I'm sure they'd put you in charge of many robots, Radius. You would be a teacher of the robots. I want to be master over people. Helena, staggering. You're mad. Then send me to the stamping mill. Do you think we're afraid of you? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Radius, give this note to Mr. Dahman. It asks them not to send you to the stamping mill. I'm sorry you hate us so. Dr. Gall enters the room. You wanted me? It's about Radius, Doctor. He had an attack this morning. He smashed the statues downstairs. What a pity to lose him. Radius isn't going to be put in the stamping mill. But every robot, after he has had an attack, it's a strict order. No matter. Radius isn't going if I can prevent it. I warn you, it's dangerous. Come here to the window, my good fellow. Let's have a look. Please give me a needle or a pin. For what? A test. Sticks it into the hand of Radius, who gives a violent start. Gently, gently. Opens the jacket of Radius and puts his ear to his heart. Radius, you are going into the stamping mill. Do you understand? There they'll kill you and grind you to powder. That's terribly painful. It will make you scream aloud. <sighs> Doctor! No, no, Radius, I was wrong. I forgot that Madame Doman has put in a good word for you, and you'll be let off. Do you understand? Ah, that makes a difference, doesn't it? All right, you can go. You do unnecessary things. Radius returns to the library. Reaction of the pupils, increase of sensitiveness. It wasn't an attack characteristic of the robots. What was it, then? Heaven knows. Stubbornness, anger, or revolt. I don't know. And his heart, too. What? It was fluttering with nervousness, like a human heart. He was all in a sweat with fear, and, do you know, I don't believe the rascal is a robot at all any longer. Doctor, has Radius a soul? He's got something nasty. If you knew how he hates us. Oh, Doctor, are all your robots like that? All the new ones that you began to make in a different way? Well, some are more sensitive than others. They're all more like human beings than Rossum's robots were. Perhaps this hatred is more like human beings, too. That, too, is progress. What became of the girl you made? The one who is most like us? Your favorite? I kept her. She's lovely, but stupid. No good for work. But she's so beautiful. I called her Helena. I wanted her to resemble you. But she's a failure. In what way? She goes about as if in a dream, remote and listless. She is without life. I watch and wait for a miracle to happen. Sometimes I think to myself, if you were able to wake up only for a moment, you will kill me for having made you. And yet you go on making robots. Why are no more children being born? We don't know. <laughs> but you must tell me. You see, so many robots are being manufactured that people are becoming superfluous. 
man is really a survival but that he should begin to die out after a paltry thirty years of competition that's the awful part of it you might almost think that nature was offended at the manufacture of the robots all the universities are sending in long petitions to restrict their production otherwise they say mankind will become extinct through lack of fertility but the r u r shareholder of course won't hear of it all the governments on the other hand are clamoring for an increase in production to raise the standards of their armies and all of the manufacturers in the world are ordering robots like mad and has no one demanded that the manufacture should cease altogether no one has the courage courage people would stone him to death you see after all it's more convenient to get your work done by the robots oh doctor what's going to become of people god knows madame helena it looks to us scientists like the end helena rising thank you for coming and telling me that means you're sending me away yes exit dr gall with sudden resolution nana nana the fire light it quickly helena rushes into doman's room nana entering from left what light the fire in summer has that mad radius gone a fire in summer what an idea nobody would think she'd been married for ten years she's like a baby no sense at all a fire in summer like a baby helena returns from right with armful of faded papers is it burning nana all this has got to be burned what's that old papers fearfully old nana shall i burn them are they any use no well then burn them helena throwing the first sheet on the fire what would you say nana if this was money a lot of money i'd say burn it a lot of money is a bad thing and if it was an invention the greatest invention in the world i'd say burn it all these new-fangled things are an offence to the lord it's downright wickedness wanting to improve the world after he has made it look how they curl up as if they were alive oh, Nana, how horrible here let me burn them no no i must do it myself just look at the flames they're like hands like tongues like living shapes raking fire with the poker lie down lie down that's the end of them standing up horror-stricken <laughs> nana nana good gracious what is it you've burned whatever have i done well what was it men's laughter off left <sighs> go quickly it's the gentleman coming good gracious what a place exits Doman opens the door at left come along and offer your congratulations enter hellemeyer and gall madame helena i congratulate you on this festive day uh, thank you where are fabry and busman they've gone down to the harbour friends we must drink to this happy occasion brandy vitriol if you like with soda water exits uh, let's be temperate no soda well, what's been burning here well shall i tell her about it of course it's all over now Hellemeyer embracing Doman and Dr. Gall. It's all over now. It's all over now. It's all over now. It's all over now. Helena entering from left with decanter and glasses. What's all over now? What's the matter with you all? A piece of good luck, Madame Doman. Just ten years ago today you arrived on this island. And now, ten years later, to the minute. The same ship's returning to us. So here's to luck that's fine and strong madam your health which ship do you mean any ship will do as long as it arrives in time to the ship boys empties his glass you've been waiting for a ship rather like robinson crusoe madame helena best wishes come along domin out with the news do tell me what's happened first it's all up what's up the revolt what revolt give me that paper hallemeyer reads the first national robot organization has been founded at havre and has issued an appeal to the robots throughout the world i read that that means a revolution a revolution of all the robots in the world by jove i'd like to know who started it so would i there was nobody in the world who could affect the robots no agitator no one and suddenly this happens if you please what did they do they got possession of all the firearms telegraphs radio stations railways and ships and don't forget that these rascals outnumbered us by at least a thousand to one a hundredth part of them would be enough to settle us 
Remember that this news was brought by the last steamer. That explains the stoppage of all communication, and the arrival of no more ships. We knocked off work a few days ago, and we're just waiting to see when things are to start afresh. Is that why you gave me a warship? Oh, no, my dear. I ordered that six months ago, just to be on the safe side. But upon my soul, I was sure then that we'd be on board today. Why six months ago? Well, there were signs, you know, but that's of no consequence. To think that this week the whole of civilization has been at stake. Your health, boys. Your health, Madame Helena. You say it's all over? Absolutely. How do you know? The boat's coming in, a regular mail boat, exact to the minute by the timetable. It will dock punctually at 11.30. Punctuality is a fine thing, boys. That's what keeps the world in order. Here's to punctuality. Then everything's all right? Practically everything. I believe they've cut the cables and seized the radio stations. But it doesn't matter if only the timetable holds good. If the timetable holds good, human laws hold good. Divine laws hold good. The laws of the universe hold good. Everything holds good that ought to hold good. The timetable is more significant than the gospel. More than Homer. More than the whole of Kant. The timetable is the most perfect product of the human mind. Madame Domin, I'll fill up my glass. Why didn't you tell me anything about it? Heaven forbid. You mustn't be worried with such things. But if the revolution has spread as far as here? You wouldn't know anything about it. Why? Because we'd be on board your Ultimus and well out at sea. Within a month, Helena, we'll be dictating our own terms to the robots. I don't understand. We'd take something away with us that the robots could not exist without. What, Harry? The secret of their manufacture. Old Rossum's manuscript. As soon as they found out that they could make themselves, they'd be on their knees to us. Madam Doman, that was our trump card. I never had the least fear that the robots would win. How could they against people like us? Why didn't you tell me? Why, the boat's in. 11.30 to the dot. The good old Amelia that brought Madame Helena to us. Just ten years ago to the minute. They're throwing out the mailbags. Busman's waiting for them. Bob Ray will bring us the first news. You know, Helena, I'm fearfully curious to know how they tackled this business in Europe. To think we weren't in it. We who invented the robots. Harry. What is it? Let's leave here. Now, Helena? Oh, come, come. As quickly as possible, all of us. Why? Please, Harry, please. Dr. Gall, Hallmeyer, please close the factory. Why? None of us could leave here now. Why? Because we're about to extend the manufacture of the robots. What? Now? Now, after the revolt? Yes, precisely. After the revolt. We're just beginning the manufacture of a new kind. What kind? Henceforward, we shan't have just one factory. There won't be universal robots anymore. We'll establish a factory in every country, in every state. And do you know what these new factories will make? No. What? National robots. How do you mean? I mean that each of these factories will produce robots of a different color, a different language. They'll be complete strangers to each other. They'll never be able to understand each other. Then we'll egg them on a little in the matter of misunderstanding, and the result will be that for ages to come, every robot will hate every other robot of a different factory mark. By Jove, we'll make Negro robots and Swedish robots and Italian robots and Chinese robots and Czechoslovakian robots, and then... Harry, that's dreadful. Madame Domin, here's to the hundred new factories. The national robots. Helena, mankind can only keep things going for another hundred years at the outside. For a hundred years, men must be allowed to develop and achieve the most they can. Oh, close the factory before it's too late. Domin, I tell you, we are just beginning on a bigger scale than ever. Enter Fabry. Well, Fabry? What happened? Have you been down to the boat? Read that, Domin. Fabry hands Domin a small handbill. Let's hear. Tell us, Fabry. Well, everything is all right comparatively on the whole much as we expected they acquitted themselves splendidly who the people oh yes of course that is excuse me there is something we ought to discuss alone oh fabry have you had bad news Doman makes a sign to fabry no no on the contrary i only think that we had better go into the office stay here i'll go she goes into the library what's happened damnation bear in mind that the amelia brought a whole bales of these leaflets no other cargo at all. What? But it arrived on a minute. The robots are great in punctuality. Read it, Domin. 
Sturman reads handbill. Robots throughout the world. We, the first international organization of Rossum's Universal Robots, proclaim man as our enemy and an outlaw in the universe. Good heavens! Who taught them these phrases? Go on. They say they are more highly developed than man, stronger and more intelligent, that man's their parasite. Why, it's absurd. Read the third paragraph. Robots throughout the world, we command you to kill all mankind. Spare no men, spare no women. Save factories, railways, machinery, mines, and raw materials. Destroy the rest. Then return to work. Work must not be stopped. That's ghastly. The devils. These orders are to be carried out as soon as received? Then come detailed instructions. Is this actually being done, Fabry? Evidently. Busman rushes in. Well, boys, I suppose you've heard the glad news. Quick, on board the Ultimus. Wait, Harry, wait, there's no hurry. My word, that was a sprint. Why wait? Because it's no good, my boy. The robots are already on board the Ultimus. That's ugly. Fabre, telephone the electrical works. Fabry, my boy, don't. The wire has been cut. Doman, inspecting his revolver. Well, then, I'll go. Where? To the electrical works. There are some people still there. I'll bring them across. Better not try it. Why? Because I'm very much afraid we are surrounded. Surrounded? Runs to window. I rather think you're right. By Jove, that's deuced quick work. Helena runs in from the library. Harry, what's this? Where did you get it? Helena points to the manifesto of the robots which she has in her hand. The robots in the kitchen. Where are the ones that brought it? They're gathered round the house. The factory whistle blows. Noon? Doman, looking at his watch. It's not noon yet. That must be... that's... What? The robot signal. The attack. Gaul, Hallemeyer, and Fabry close and fasten the iron shutters outside the windows, darkening the room. The whistle is still blowing as the curtain falls. End of Act Two. This has been a LibriVox recording. It was edited, compiled, and distributed by Audible Anarchist.